Howdy folks and UC CNC users. This will be another update for uh, ProBit for UC CNC. Uh, I've still been working at it a little bit and added some new features I want to show. Um, so I'm using a recent uh, version of UC CNC here. Load that up. And you'll notice when uh, the plugin loads, it's got a new window. Hide this Xbox control plugin. So the original doesn't look much different, but now there's a auxiliary window with a viewer added in. I'd been looking around a little bit and found uh, this viewer on code project is some source provided by Jason Titcomb uh, from cncedit.com. So uh, I asked him if it was okay to use it and he said, go, go nuts and use it how you wish. So it works out well for my use here. Um, So we've got the uh, probe tip on camera up here. Um, we've demonstrated that before. A uh, couple of new things I've tweaked based on some comments on the forum. Uh, Z surface value and Z depth to make it a little bit more um, common sense use oriented, I guess. It now takes negative and positive Z depth values so when you go ahead and set a Z surface, uh, you've, you've set the surface to this value here. And uh, this value is what will be recorded into the DXF as the Z height while this LED is lit. And if you'd prefer to have um, the value recorded at the actual tip height, snap back off and unset it. But for now, we want to set it. And now, you can go to, uh, let's make Z clearance 0.3, so it's obvious, and Z depth at 0.1, a positive value. So if we go up to the clearance value, that's what it'll auto retract if you have auto raise lowers selected. And if I say Z down, this will be the, the value it goes to when it automatically drops in. And you can see we're sitting at 0.1. If I tell it to go to, Zero, it should be just about to touch. Oops, what do we got there? It doesn't like the value of zero, so let's just say 0 0.001. And because it, it actually touched the probe, it retracted to 10 thou above. So there we're hovering just above the surface. Now, if I go over to a location where I'm above, if I set a negative depth now, so that's a little bit more intuitive. Um, thanks to Cycle Moto 4, I think it was. Sorry, I forgot your username, but uh, he had a good comment and I implemented it. Um, so now let's demonstrate the, the viewer a little bit. So I'll come up to the top of the guy here. Oops. Let's set our Z clear or Z depth to 0.05. Let's just do a quick retouch off. And we'll go back down. And we're going to come and do XY perimeter. Set our start angle to 270 since I'm above it. I'm basically up here on the part in positive Y. And we'll start the routine. And so now if you keep an eye on it, you've got the, the viewer over here. It shows a top view a front and a side view and an isometric view. And still got a few bugs here, but. So while all these views, you can pan, zoom. Um, at the current moment, obviously I don't uh, 
recommend going and playing with the view while it's in process. And as you can see, because we've got Z set and zero here in the Z surface value, it's drawing all of the elements actually on the, the zero Z plane. Um, so if I go ahead and stop that a second, let me just turn this off. So it becomes apparent why this, this whole setup here exists. Uh, let's restart it in the exact same angle it was. Oops. My bad. I'll just jog it back into position. Let's well, not start in the same angle. Let's go zero because now I want to go positive X. So now when you look at it, you can see we're now probing and taking the data at the actual probe tip height. So um, that's the whole purpose of if Z is set or not, is so you can record your data onto a fixed plane that you define or if it's, if it's in the real um, XYZ coordinate as defined by your DROs. And we'll stop that. I'm just trying to do a real quick update. I'm not going to go a whole lot into depth. Um, functionality wise, there's not much else new. If I do jump over and do say an XC perimeter, start this at 270 degrees. So it probes straight down forwards. Start that. So you can see from the front view here, it's recording this data. And I know why that exception is being thrown now, but uh, so it's uh, worth noting that a lot of the uh, the geometry you see here, these lines here, it's actually being fed into this viewer's G code. So a lot of these lines won't exist in your DXF. They're just here in the visualizer. But uh, I think what's thrown the exception is, is this uh, um, control has uh, highlighting of elements. I need to find a way to stop highlighting while it's in process of probing because that's what's throwing an exception. Uh, if you hover over it and you click on it, it'll actually give you coordinates and whatnot. So, um, again, it's a really neat control that uh, Jason Titcomb devised and uh, thankfully let me use it okay. Um, I like it. And I think it'll help uh, with the functionality of Probit so you can see where you've been and what you've done and where you want to go to next. Um, so I'll continue to revise this as I work on the plugin. Just retract here, and again, you've got the ability to pan, rotate. If you go ahead and you hide rapid lines and rapid points, the rapid lines are what I used to show, I'll say the initial moves to the start of a probing, and then if you hide those, all you're left with is the geometry you're actually recording. And uh, you can hide it and bring it back with this button here, 3D Viewer. Uh, what else you got here? Select, as I was pointing out, if you hover over an item and you click, it'll give you locations. Uh, you can change the viewer to a couple of panes, a single big pane, or the four. Um, right now, the layers here they don't actually mean layers in your DXF currently. Um, they're just for visualization. Every time it starts a new routine, either XY or XZ, I throw a new layer down just so you can differentiate what you're doing on the screen. But your DXF file show everything to one layer. And again, you can turn those on and off. So um, 
or anything is the way it's written is you can kind of play back what you've done. So um, gives you a feel for what order you've done things and what you have and haven't done already. Um, just as before then, you take your data, you save it. We'll call this uh, new 327. If I go ahead and open up Fusion, Couple other things while I'm waiting for this to load. Um, I've been playing around with this plugin for a while since I initially put it out. So it's it's demo time limit's been coming near its end of 30 days. So in these next couple of builds, I'm gonna extend the uh, trial out to 60 days and uh, make it so it'll record more points and more data as a demo. Um, just to let people play with it more and decide if it's worth using for them or not. Um, camera. There we go. Gotta love that Fusion updates every single time you use it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and insert a DXF. Select the plane. And the new 327 is the item we just recorded a second ago, so I haven't touched it or done anything with it. So so as you can see, um, you basically only get the geometry that you actually took with the uh, um, touches. All the stuff that showed in the 3D viewer is lines extending from the origin. Those are just imaginary as part of the display. Um, but this should again give you an idea of, of what it does and that the display uh, will hopefully benefit you in showing you where you've been and what you're collecting as you collect it. And uh, Again, the display will also gather all the stuff from normal plain 2D data. Uh, just as a quick demo of that. Here. So we're on this page here. Let me set up something new for it to probe at. camera back. So I've set up a nice little, uh, my uh, touch plate as a diameter to probe against. Oh yeah, another feature I added in quick as a result of the comments was to uh, make it so the buttons reflect what you're doing, whether you're in edge mode, single point, diameter mode with multi points around a diameter or not. And then if you are just in a basic pocket, whether it's circular or rectangular is what it will record. So we'll demo that real quickly. This is circular. Uh, set our Z value, let's just touch off here. And Z depth. 0.02 ought to do. So there I'm within, I'm down below here, but I'm 0.2 above the surface here. And let's just go ahead and run this guy here. I think I didn't start out centered enough for the probe distance. Let's try that again. It's my bad. And I think that message box is a result of me tweaking this to allow negative and positive numbers. I got to go back in and clean that up real quick. There, it uh, drew a circle in relative coordinates to where we are. 
uh, looking at the side view again, it's, it's on the XY plane because we've set this as zero. And then, uh, so we've got this auto raise lower here. Let's just go ahead and rerun this as a rectangular pocket for fun. So now it's gonna do basically the exact same hits. Nothing's different about the probe routines whatsoever. but uh, it should give you a rectangle as geometry. My uh, touch plate's sliding around on me a little bit. So as you can see, it drew a rectangle and it slid it up because uh, my touch plate slid around on me, but uh, I should give you an idea what that does. And then as a quick show of what does this part rotation do, If I uh, repeat this one more time, try and hold my touch plate still this time. can see it drew a rotated rectangle so um, if I had done an edge probing and I'll say set up the part rotation as not being square on the table then all my geometry as I record it would be rotated appropriately in the, the DXF file so uh, I hope uh, this display helps make things more apparent it will be useful for using the tool, tool a little better and uh, I'll keep working at it as I get time but uh, thanks for watching so I'll have an updated version out for testing shortly.